Arthur's fist pounded against the hollow console, shattering the only picture of his dead family, slain in cold blood by the merciless Thax. If the humans failed to answer the desperate Talarian distress signal and turn the tide against the insectoid monsters, his wife and daughter would have died for nothing. The old human soldier sat in his quarters on the warship Indomitable, alone with ghosts and grief. The Zathax had brutally slaughtered his loved ones in a raid years ago. But before he could slip too far into painful memories, sirens pierced the air. Proximity alarms. Incoming hostiles. Arthur raced through tight corridors to the hangar. The Indomitable shuddered as Zethax plasma blast slammed its shields. Pilots scrambled to their ships. Arthur leapt into his fighter, the Retribution. His squadron blasted out the airlock to face a swarm of Zethax attack craft. Chaos engulfed the space battle. Lasers and missiles crisscrossed the void. Hulls ruptured in sprays of shrapnel and bodies. To Arthur's right, a sickening fireball consumed his wingman's ship. Icy rage flooded Arthur's veins. He nosed the retribution toward a looming Zethax cruiser. Duking and weaving through a hailstorm of anti-fighter flak, he skimmed the cruiser's hull. At the last second, he fired his thrusters and plunged the retribution straight into an open hangar bay. Inside, Arthur launched his missiles, raking the hangar with explosions and shrapnel. Fire blossomed around the retribution's cockpit. Alarms screeched. He punched the eject, rocketing free of the disintegrating fighter and Zethax ship. Oh, drift! Arthur watched the Indomitable's guns shred the remaining Zethax forces, but victory had come at a steep price in human lives. Back on board, Arthur had barely processed the aftermath when the captain herself sought him out. Lieutenant Freeman, she said grimly, I have a priority hollow for you. Code Black Clearance. In the privacy of his quarters, Arthur activated the hollow communicator. The ghostly blue image of a bird-like alien flickered to life before him. Greetings, Lieutenant Freeman, the Talarian said in perfect English. The alien's beady eyes fixed on Arthur's. My people have begged the galaxy for salvation from the Zax, but in our darkest hour, only humanity, with its indomitable will and courage, has answered the call. You are our final hope. The Talarians formally request your help to defeat the Zithax forever. If you fail, the insectoid monsters will slaughter and enslave us all. I pray you accept this mission. Arthur stared into those desperate alien eyes, thinking of his murdered family, of humanity's struggle, and made his decision. Aboard the Indomitable, Arthur strode into the briefing room. A Talarian delegation awaited, led by a fierce-looking avian named Solaris. Stiff blue feathers jutted from his head like a crown. His vibrant green eyes seized Arthur, sizing up the battle-hardened human. Lieutenant Freeman, your actions against the Zithax have become legend. My people cling to such tales, for we have little other hope. Solaris spoke perfect English, his voice a guttural squawk. Arthur nodded. The Zithax are monsters. We'll fight them to our last breath. Solaris flared his nostrils. If only the rest of the galaxy shared humanity's courage. Our empire, once spanning dozens of star systems, has crumbled before the Zax advance. We are not natural warriors like you humans. Despite our technological prowess, we cannot match the Zax's savagery. The Talarian's wings twitched, a nervous tick. In desperation, we sent emissaries to the other galactic powers, begging for aid. They rebuffed us, mocked us as weak cowards. Only your kind who the galaxy sees as primitive brutes, answered our plea. Arthur's eyes narrowed. He knew well how the other aliens viewed humanity, aggressive, uncivilized, a species to be contained. The war with the Zathax had only reinforced that perception. Solaris drew himself up, locking eyes with Arthur. My people need a champion, Lieutenant Freeman. I humbly request that you journey to our homeworld, take command of our remaining forces, Help us make our last stand against the Zax Horde. Arthur hesitated, torn. Earth still needed him. Humanity waged its own desperate war. Seeing the indecision on Arthur's face, Solaris leaned in close. Our spies recovered Zax plans to invade your space next. They seek to punish humanity for interfering in their conquest. 
Helping us now is your best chance to blunt their claws before they tear out Earth's throat. A chill ran down Arthur's spine. He pictured Zack's drones swarming human cities, their cruel pincers red with innocent blood, just like when they butchered his family. His jaw clenched. The Talarian was right. The Zithax had to be stopped, whatever the cost. Grim resolve settled over Arthur like armor. I'll do it. I'll come to your homeworld, and together we will send those Thax bastards straight to hell. The Indomitable dropped out of warp above Avalon Prime, the Talarian homeworld. Arthur leaned forward in the transport shuttle, eager for his first glimpse of humanity's new allies. But as the blue-green orb filled the viewport, his heart sank. Hundreds of gleaming Talarian warships hung in orbit, an impressive display of military might. But to Arthur's battle-honed eye, the fleet's formations were sloppy, their patrols lackadaisical. These were not the tight, disciplined ranks of Terran warships. The shuttle descended through wispy clouds toward a sprawling city nestled between soaring crystal spires. It settled onto a landing pad atop the largest tower, where an honor guard of Talarian soldiers waited in perfect formation, resplendent in ornate armor. But as Arthur disembarked with Solaris and their entourages, he noticed the guards' stances were too relaxed, their eyes wandering. They held their pulse rifles like showpieces, not weapons. Solaris led them into a cavernous war room, dominated by a holographic star map. Around it stood the Talarian High Command, a dozen bird-like aliens in elaborate uniforms studded with medals and ribbons. They eyed Arthur with a mix of hope and trepidation. Festim generals, Solaris began. This is Lieutenant Arthur Freeman of Earth. He has come to aid us in our darkest hour. A tall hawk-faced Talarian stepped forward. I am General Zephyr, Supreme Commander of Avalon Prime's Defense Forces. We thank you for your assistance, Lieutenant Freeman. But with all due respect, I question the need for a human to assume command of our proud warriors. Arthur met Zephyr's gaze. I'll be blunt, General. You have an impressive fleet and well-equipped troops, but from what I've seen your soldiers are soft, undisciplined. They preen their feathers when they should be running combat drills. They aren't ready for the savagery of the Zethax. Zephyr's feathers bristled with indignation. How dare you! Talarian warriors have a glorious martial tradition stretching back millennia. We have never been conquered. And when was your last real war? Arthur pressed. Your people have grown complacent in peacetime. The Zethax won't be impressed by shiny ships and fancy uniforms. They're vicious, relentless killers. Your forces need to be retrained from the ground up if we're to have any chance. The Talarian commanders erupted in outrage, squawking in their native tongue. Solaris raised a wing for silence. The human's words are harsh, he said heavily, but they ring with truth. We have not faced a threat like the Zethax in living memory. If we are to survive, we must adapt. We must become warriors once more. Arthur nodded grimly. I'll need full authority to reshape your forces. My fellow human veterans and I will put your troops through hell. We'll forge them into soldiers who can stand against the Zethax and prevail. The generals glared at Arthur, their feathers ruffled with resentment. Zephyr looked ready to argue, but Solaris cut him off. Lieutenant Freeman has humanity's trust. He has mine. We would be fools not to heed his counsel in this dark hour. After a tense, whispered debate in Talarian, Zephyr turned to Arthur. Very well, he spat. The High Command places our forces under your command. Do not make us regret it. Over the next weeks, Arthur and his battle-hardened comrades drove the Talarians harder than they ever had been before. They instituted a brutal training regimen, subjecting the bird-like troops to punishing drills and lifelike combat simulations from dawn to dusk. Arthur had them running obstacle courses in full gear, rehearsing urban warfare tactics in the blistering heat and enduring the concussive shock of live-fire exercises. Many Talarians resented the humans' harsh methods, grumbling that these ape-like brutes had no right to order them around like hatchlings. Solaris, however, led by example, throwing himself into the training with grim determination. He made it clear that anyone who questioned the Humans' authority questioned his own. Slowly, grudgingly, the Talarian warriors began to toughen up, 
to shed their complacency and recover the fighting edge of their ancestors. But would it be enough? Grim-faced Talarian spies soon delivered dire news. A vast Zathax armada was massing on the borders of Talarian space, easily dwarfing any force the avians had ever fielded. Sensor drones brought back chilling images of monstrous hive ships, gorged on the energy of stolen stars, of swarming waves of Zethax attack craft that blotted out suns. The insectoid monsters were coming, and all of Arthur's desperate work would soon be put to the ultimate test. The Zithax came like a screeching black tide, their swarms blotting out the stars. Avalon Prime's orbital defences burst to life, hails of railgun slugs and plasma bolts slamming into the onrushing hive ships. But for every insectoid vessel shattered, a dozen more surged forward, disgorging waves of fighters and troop transports. In the command bunker deep beneath the capital, Arthur and Solaris watched the tactical hollow with grim faces. The Talarian fleet fought with desperate courage, but the sheer weight of numbers began to tell. One by one, the avian ships winked out, consumed by Zethax, Plasma, or crushing talons. Battle group Zephyr and Talon are overrun, a Talarian operator reported, his voice shaking. They're... they're routing, sir. Cowards! Solaris snarled. But Arthur saw the fear in his eyes. Pull them back, Arthur ordered. Consolidate the fleet around Avalon Prime. We'll make our stand here. As the Talarians fell back in ragged formation, Arthur gathered his human veterans and Solaris's best units. We're going to buy time for the fleet to regroup, he told them. Hit and run attacks, guerrilla strikes. We'll make the bugs bleed for every inch. For the next furious hours, Arthur led his force in a series of daring raids, striking the Zethax advance and fading away before the aliens could bring their numbers to bear. His retribution fighters shredded Zethax assault shuttles, while his commandos stormed hive ship corridors in vicious close quarters battle. But each bloody victory cost them dearly. Human and Talarian alike fell, torn apart by Zethax claws or incinerated by plasma. Arthur watched in horror as his oldest friend, Commander Reeves, rammed his crippled corvette into a looming hive ship, atomizing them both in a sunbright fireball. Choking back grief, Arthur ordered the survivors to fall back to Avalon Prime. The Zethax were coming, an implacable tide of chitin and hate. The planet had to hold. The next days were a blur of blood and fire. The Zethax hurled themselves at Avalon Prime's defences with single-minded savagery, heedless of losses. Talarian and human soldiers fought side by side in the rubble-choked streets, pouring railgun fire and plasma blasts, into the scuttling hordes. The air shook with the thunder of explosions and the shrieks of the dying. But inch by bloody inch, the defenders were driven back. The Zethax were learning, adapting. For every tactic Arthur employed, the aliens devised a ruthless counter. Solaris raged and cursed as his lines buckled, despair etched on his avian features. In the command bunker, Arthur stared at the hollow map, numb with exhaustion, the Zethax advance was a crimson cancer devouring the planet. They couldn't hold much longer. His gaze fell on the throbbing red icon of the Zethax flagship. If he could get aboard, fight his way to the Queen. The Zethax were a hive mind. Kill the Queen, and the drones would fall into disarray. It was a desperate gambit, but what choice remained? Arthur gathered his most skilled warriors, both human and Telerian, we're going to gut the beast, he told them. Drive our blade into its brain. It's our last chance. He met Solaris's eyes. The avian's gaze was bleak but resolute. Go, Solaris said. We'll hold them here to the last breath. As drop pods hurtled Arthur's strike team toward the Zethax flagship, he pictured Solaris and the remaining defenders making their doomed stand amid the ruins of a dying world. He clenched his jaw, gripping his plasma rifle tight. He would make their sacrifice matter. He would end this, even if it cost him everything. The pod slammed into the hive ship's armoured hide, disgorging Arthur and his team into the nightmarish organic labyrinth of the Zethax vessel. Strange, cloyingly sweet smells assaulted his nostrils. The chittering and skittering of Zethax drones echoed from the pulsing walls. Move out, Arthur ordered, his voice a hoarse whisper. 
Stay sharp, the queen will be deep in the ship's core. They advanced into the twisting biomechanical corridors, weapons leveled. Zethak's warriors lunged from shadowed alcoves, all slashing talons and shrieks of rage. Arthur's team met them with disciplined bursts of plasma fire, leaving charred and twitching bodies in their wake. But more always came, scrambling over the dead to hurl themselves at the intruders. A skittering tide of chitin and hate. One by one Arthur's fighters fell, dragged down and torn apart by the relentless Zethax. Grief and fury warred in Arthur's heart as he pressed on, his armor slick with blood both human and alien. He had to reach the queen. Nothing else mattered. At last they breached the hive's central chamber, a cavernous space pulsing with sickly bioluminescence, and there, squatting in the center like a bloated spider, was the Zethax Queen. The monstrous matriarch rose on segmented legs, towering over Arthur. Her compound eyes glittered with malevolent intelligence. Around her, a living carpet of drones and warriors chittered and hissed, eager to rend and kill. For Earth! Arthur roared, raising his rifle. For Avalon Prime. He charged his last few comrades at his side, hurling themselves at the hideous queen. Plasma bolts and acid-slick talons crisscrossed the air, carapaces cracked and flesh sizzled. Arthur dodged and rolled, coming up firing. His shot stitched across the queen's heaving thorax, spattering Ikor. She screeched in pain and rage, lashing out with barbed forelegs. One caught Arthur's side, sending him crashing to the fleshy floor. His rifle skittered away. The queen loomed over him, mandibles dripping. Arthur dragged himself back, scrabbling for a weapon, anything. His fingers closed around the hilt of a fallen comrade's monomolecular blade. The queen lunged, all gnashing fangs and murderous intent. With a defiant bellow, Arthur surged to meet her, blade flashing. Arthur's blade flashed in a deadly arc, slicing through the queen's chitinous neck with a sickening crunch. Ikor sprayed as her massive head toppled to the fleshy floor. But even as the queen's body spasmed in its death throes, a barbed limb lashed out, impaling Arthur through the gut. White-hot agony seared through him. He staggered back, the blade falling from nerveless fingers. Around him, the few remaining humans and Talarians battled on against the tide of drones, buying him precious seconds. But one by one, they fell, overwhelmed by sheer numbers. Gritting his teeth against the pain, Arthur fumbled at his belt, pulling free a plasma grenade. He thumbed the activation stud, feeling it thrum with barely contained energy. With the last of his strength, he hurled himself at the Queen's twitching corpse, he jammed the grenade between her mandibles and rolled clear. The explosion shook the chamber, vaporizing the queen's head in a maelstrom of fire and shrapnel. Arthur was hurled across the room, slamming into the far wall with bone-crushing force. Through a haze of pain and concussion, he saw the remaining Zethax warriors reeling, suddenly directionless. The drones milled about in confusion, their guiding intelligence extinguished. Arthur slumped to the oozing floor, his life bleeding out around him. Darkness crept in at the edges of his vision. With numb fingers, he keyed his comm unit. Solaris, it's done. The queen is dead. Press the attack. Static crackled in his ear, then Solaris's voice strained with emotion. Understood, my friend, your sacrifice will not be in vain. Avalon Prime will not fall this day. Distant explosions shook the hive ship, as the Talarian fleet, galvanized by the Queen's death, redoubled their assault. Searing light filled the chamber as the vessel's structure began to fail. Arthur's head lolled back, his gaze unfocused. He thought of Earth, of the family he'd lost, of the friends who had fought and died at his side. He hoped it had been enough. Blackness claimed him. Arthur awoke to searing light and the acrid stench of antiseptics. He was lying in a bed, swathed in bandages and attached to softly beeping machines. Solaris sat at his bedside, his avian features drawn with exhaustion and grief. The Talarian's eyes brightened as he saw Arthur stir. You're awake, thank the gods. We won, Arthur croaked through cracked lips. Solaris bowed his head. 
Yes, my friend, but at a terrible cost. Avalon Prime is in ruins. Our fleet is but a shadow of what it was. So many lives lost. Arthur struggled to sit up, ignoring the lances of pain shooting through his battered body. But we beat them. We showed the Zethax they're not invincible. Solaris clasped Arthur's hand in his talons. Indeed. And it was your courage, your leadership, that made it possible. Humanity saved us from annihilation. The Talarian gestured to the window. Outside, the shattered skyline of the capital stretched to the horizon, smoke still rising from the rubble. But among the ruins, Talarians laboured to clear debris, to tend to the wounded. The first fragile shoots of recovery. We will rebuild, Solaris said firmly, and we will fight on, your people and mine together. Days later, Arthur stood stiffly on a podium, his wounds still fresh beneath his dress uniform. Before him stretched a vast crowd of Talarians, their feathers rippling in the wind. Solaris stepped forward, a glittering medal in his hands. He placed it around Arthur's neck, the gold star resting heavily over his heart. Lieutenant Arthur Freeman, Solaris intoned, his voice carrying across the hushed crowd. For your valor, your leadership, and your unwavering spirit in the face of annihilation, the Talarian people bestow upon you our highest honor, the Star of Avalon. The crowd erupted into cheers and applause, chanting Arthur's name, but the human soldier held up a hand for silence, his face grim. People of Avalon Prime, he began, his voice rough with emotion. I am honored by this recognition, but the real heroes are those who gave their lives so that we might stand here today, human and Talarian alike. He gestured to the ranks of wounded soldiers, the grieving families of the fallen. We have won a great victory, but the war is not over. The Zethax will return, stronger and more vicious than ever. We must be ready. Arthur's gaze swept the crowd, his eyes alight with fierce determination. We must continue to build our strength, to forge closer ties between our peoples, for only together, standing as one, can we hope to prevail against the darkness to come. As the cheers rose again, Arthur turned to Solaris, gripping the Talarian's shoulder. There's still so much to do, he said quietly. I'll need to return to Earth to rally more support, to make them understand the threat we face. Solaris nodded solemnly. Of course, but know that you will always have a place of honor here among us. Avalon Prime will never forget what humanity has done. A medical shuttle, its hull gleaming in the sun, waited to take Arthur back to human space. As he was helped aboard by the medics, he looked back at the assembled Talarians, at the devastated but defiant city rising behind them. So much sacrificed, so much still at stake. The dog tags of his fallen comrades clinked softly beneath his uniform, a constant reminder of the price of victory. As the shuttle lifted off, carrying him up through wisps of cloud, Arthur let his eyes drift closed, the exhaustion of battle and loss finally claiming him. But even in the darkness of sleep, his mind raced with plans and contingencies, strategies to counter the looming Zethax threat. The war was far from over, and Arthur would be ready for the battles to come. If you finish this story, please subscribe and like the video, then leave a comment that says, I like the story, and I will heart every single one of them. It really helps me. Thank you for your time.